chapter 8, verse 28 to 32. And as you were doing that, I want to, I know my pastor's not here, but I truly want to give him honor. KJ said this morning that, you know, pastor put the trust in the, the, the new generation. <laughs> well, this old generation is standing here. Hello. <laughs> and so he's put some trust in this old generation. Praise the Lord. Actually, Brother Madej was the one who was supposed to be ministering here tonight, but he was ill today and he was not able to be here. And uh, so we want to pray for Brother Midday. Keep Brother Bembry and his family in prayer as well. And Brother Austin as well. He is not here because he is suffering some illness as well. Praise the Lord. And anybody else that you know that is ill, keep them in prayer. Pray for them as you'd want them to pray for you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 28. 28. It says, And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Amen. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. And God, who has also freely given us all things. Let's lift our hands to the Lord one more time. Amen. And let's give him thanks because these are the things that are already done. These are not past tense. They're not future tense. They are very present tense right here. We are justified in the name of Jesus Christ. We are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. He has called us. He has ordained us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he has freely given us all things. Jesus, we pray tonight now, God. Help us, dear God. And I pray for this short time, Lord. Give me the words to speak here, God, to be a blessing, God, to your people. That, Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your word, dear God, and the receiving of your word, God, miracles and changes, God, in our lives take place tonight, Father. And we give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. And I would ask you, to bring up Psalms 119 and verse 89. Well, well, we'll start with the part where it says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Can you say amen? Forever, O Lord, thy word, thy word is settled in heaven. Isaiah 40 and 8. The grass withereth. The flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Praise the Lord. And Matthew 24 and 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. You see, the Bible gives us two, three, and there's more witnesses, amen, that the word of God remaineth forever. Amen. It's forever settled in heaven. Can you say, praise the Lord. Understand, God's word does not change. Praise the Lord. There are those who try to change it, but God's word is forever settled in heaven. I would like to title this here tonight. I gave just a little, uh, a little uh, lesson this morning here to the Timothy group, and I called it Food for Thought. And so tonight I would like to call this Food for Thought. <laughs> Maybe part two. Okay. But food for thought. And let us think on these things. Amen? You know, in Washington, D.C., I believe in the National Archives there, there's a document there that's over 200 years old, and that document is called the Constitution of the United States. You know, it is our framework for this nation. Amen? That gives us the liberties, the freedoms, the laws, and what has made this nation great. 
And it's made this nation great because it's all, it has also included the liberty for us to preach the gospel, amen, to believe in God, amen. And not only that there, but to be a nation that has blessed many other nations with the word of God. Can you say amen? Now, today, sad to say, there are, there are those out there today who want to take that document and they want to destroy that document and they want to destroy all that it stands for. Let me tell you tonight, if that ever comes to pass and that document and all that we believe as a result of that document called the Constitution of the United States of America, well, there goes America. You understand that? I pray to God that that will never happen. But we don't know what the tomorrows will bring because we are living in a very crazy, upside-down world, are we not? Amen. And then, and according with the Word of God, you and I know that there are those from years gone by, there are those today, and there are those who will be tomorrow that are there to purposely to destroy the Word of God. They will argue against the Word of God. They will spit on the Word of God. They will destroy the Bibles. They will destroy the Word of God. And, you know, whenever a country, you know, you know, invites a dictator to come in, or whenever a dictator generally takes over in a country, one of the first books that they destroy is the Bible. Amen. You know, it's something here that we should understand, too, that I know we live in a political situation, and I know we live in a lot of chaos right now, but you ought to make up your mind that anybody and anybody, and I don't care who he is, and I don't care who she is, and I don't care if they're black, I don't care if they're white, I don't care if they're Spanish, I don't care what they are. But we ought to make up our minds, amen, that no matter who they are, that if they are intent in destroying this word of God, you need to turn your backs on them. One more time, you need to turn your backs on them. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we understand here that the word of God, though it has been tried to be destroyed over the years and over the years and over the years. Amen. Many have tried to put the flames out of the Word of God. Many have tried to destroy the Word of God. Many today are trying to destroy and to keep it from people today. But the Word of God, according to the Word of God, is forever settled. And, I, as, and though I may fear or have concern that, yes, our Constitution maybe one day can be destroyed. Maybe one day it can be taken from under us. But not the Word of God. I said, not the Word of God. I have no fear about the Word of God taken from us. I have no fear about the Word of God ever being wiped out. I don't have any fear about the Word of God never, ever being remembered. I, have not, I don't have that fear because God's Word says it's forever settled in heaven. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word will remain forever. Praise God. I wonder if you would bring up Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Praise God. I believe we're familiar with this verse of Scripture here. Luke. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. And I'd like you to keep that verse of Scripture right there on the screen. Amen. You see, Jesus Christ has come to perform and to do and to accomplish all those things. And who has he come to perform, to do, and to accomplish all those things for? Can I say, amen, it's us? You see, can I say, it's the church? Praise the Lord. You see, here, I ask you to consider this here. There are scriptures here, such as this here, but I think sometimes we tend to think that these are the people outside of the church because it's only the people outside of the church, amen, that are, that are held captive. It's only the people outside of the church, amen, that are blind. It's only the people outside of the church, amen, that are poor. It's only the people outside of the church that this refers to. 
Amen. But I got news for you. There are people in the church, amen, that these things that Jesus Christ, he has come to deliver. He has come to set the captives free. He has come to give us peace. He has come to give us joy. He has come to bring healing to us. He's come to bring deliverance to us. He's come to bring that all the goodness of God to each and every one of us. Amen. You know, I know the Bible says there that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any, any deadly thing, it shall hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick. And I've seen those things happen. But so often I believe the church believes, amen, that it's for those, once again, that as we go out to reach the lost, it's for them to receive those things, but it's not for the church to receive those things. Food for thought. Food for thought. Amen. The Bible says, if God is for you, Amen. Then who can be against you? If God declares, amen, that he also has given to each and every one of us freely. What has he given to us freely? The Bible says, the word of God declares, he has given to us all things freely. All things belong to us. Healing belongs to us and when I talk about healing yes there is the physical healing but there's also the emotional healing there's also the healing of stress there's also the healing of anxiety there's also the healing of fear amen all manner of fear that God has come to give to us amen healing whether it be cancer healing whether it be a heart disease healing no matter what it might be it's freely given to the church. It's given to each and every one of us. When you are attacked by the enemy, God is there to give deliverance to us because we are attacked on occasion, and we are attacked by the adversary. And confusion sometimes comes our way, and circumstances come our way. Amen. But again, if God be for us, then who can be against us? And God is there always, amen, to give us deliverance from the hand of our enemy. I say God is always on our side. I may have shared this some time ago, but I remember being in the Navy, and, and I was getting a, underway for a nine-month cruise, if you want to call it a cruise, deployment, I guess is really the better word. It wasn't a cruise. You see, I know what a cruise is because, you see, when I was a teenager, I got to go on a cruise on the Queen Mary. I got to go on a cruise on the USS United States. I got to go on a cruise on the Queen Elizabeth. Now, those were cruises. Amen. That was nice. But when I'm getting underway here for a nine-month deployment, and I'm leaving my wife and I'm leaving my children, something happened to me that had never happened to me before. A spirit of depression came upon me. Anybody here ever experienced a spirit of depression? Look at the hands now. Let's not be ashamed, amen, because I believe each and every one of us, one time or another, you know, we have experienced a spirit of depression. I do believe that all of us can and do from time to time experience depression. Amen. And I do believe that God is our peace. I do believe that he is our deliverer. I do believe that he is our healer. But there are some times when a spirit of depression comes upon you. And that's what happened to me as the day got closer and closer for my deployment to take place. I was finding that I could not leave. What do you mean you could not leave? There was such a spirit of depression there that I could not leave my family. I could not get on that ship. I could not depart for nine months. It had never, ever happened to me in my life before. One day, two days, three days, a whole week, and Monday was coming. Monday morning, I had to get in my car. I knew I had to get in my car. You see, the thing with the Navy and the Army and the Air Force, hello, Marines, you know, you don't show up. You know, guess what? They're coming to get you. 
you are in a no-win situation there. Hello? And I knew that. But on a Saturday morning, when I was in my house all by myself, you see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, For God, amen, ah, praise the Lord, will not allow us to be tempted about that, that we are able to withstand, but will with the temptation make the escape that we may be able to bear it. Amen? See, that was one of the very first scriptures I got when I first got the Holy Ghost. So on this Saturday morning, all by myself in the living room, I took that scripture to God. You see, if God's for you, then who's against you? If God's come to deliver me, hey, man, he'll do it. You see, the key is we've got to give God the opportunity to do it. Once again, give God the opportunity to do it. Allow God to do it. Praise the Lord. So in my living room there, I looked up. I mean, I realized there's a ceiling there, but again, I looked up because God's up. Amen. And I said, God, your word says, you know, you're not allowed too much something too heavy for me. And I confessed to God. I said, God, this is too much for me. I didn't keep it back. I said, God, this is too much for me. And when I cried out to God, amen, and God, this is too much for me, immediately in my living room, it was as if somebody turned on the shower and I was standing under a shower, but this shower was the shower of the Holy Ghost. And the shower of the Holy Ghost, the pouring out of the Holy Ghost, came upon me so strong, so beautifully, and instantly I was delivered from that spirit of depression. You see, remember Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus, a short little young man, a short man. But Jesus was coming down that street. And he couldn't see over the crowd. You see, and Zacchaeus could have said, well, you know what? Maybe another day I can see him. Maybe another day I'll have the opportunity. But you see, there was something there that Zacchaeus heard about Jesus. And he really wanted to see who this Jesus was. And so no matter what his position was, no matter that he was rich, no matter that everybody hated him, he was a tax collector. What do you expect? Now, we're not supposed to hate anybody, but you know how I mean, okay? But you see, he ran after Jesus. He ran ahead of the crowd there. And look what he was not. He was not embarrassed. You see, what keeps you from a miracle is that you're embarrassed. Amen. You see, you're embarrassed to let somebody know. Or you think somebody's going to know. Hello. You see, you're embarrassed. You're intimidated. Amen. So you'll sit back there and you won't reach out like Zacchaeus reached out. You see, he ran out there. He wasn't ashamed to climb the tree. He wasn't ashamed to seek out Jesus Christ. He wasn't ashamed to want to know him. He wasn't ashamed, amen, for Jesus to do something for him. Uh, Jesus had never met Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus had never met Jesus. But when Jesus got that spot, Jesus looked up, and you know the rest of the story. Zacchaeus, come on down, because i got to stay at your house today. You see, Jesus wants to stay at your house today. I said, Jesus wants to stay at your house today. i got to tell you something tonight. You know, if you want a miracle, you've got to go after the miracle. You cannot just sit back there in apathy. You cannot just sit back there and by accident you are going to receive a miracle. If you want a miracle, amen, you've got to be like Zacchaeus. You've got to come forward. You've got to call on the name of Jesus. You've got to believe him, amen. You've got to stand upon the word that never, ever changes because Jesus, he's come to deliver you. Jesus has come to heal you. Jesus has come to give you peace. Jesus has come to give you joy. Jesus has come to give you life. Jesus has come to give you hope. Jesus has come to give you every good thing. Amen. Every good thing. Jesus has come to give up to you. Amen. But you've got to reach out. You've got to do something by faith. Amen. You've got to run out ahead of the crowd. Amen. You've got to run out and say, here I am, Jesus. 
And when you say here, I am Jesus, Jesus is saying, I'm already here. That's your part. I said, that's your part. That's your part. That's your part. That's your part. Oh. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, choir, come on up. Good spot to call the choir. Yes. And you know, yes, choir, if you come up. Oh, yeah, choir, come on up. Miracles do happen. I'm finished. <laughs> but you know, the rest of the story, my friend. Zacchaeus prepared the meal for Jesus and other friends. Jesus walked into his home. And just the presence of Jesus. Just the presence of his love. You see, God's not here to hurt anybody. That's right. That's right. Just the presence of his love. Amen. Just the presence of God's love. Change Zacchaeus. Amen. He says, Lord, all the wrongs I've done, I'm undoing them. If I've taken anything by fraud by anybody, no one I'm going to restore it. But I believe he said he's going to restore it fourfold. Amen. He was giving me half his wealth. Jesus didn't say he had to do these things. But you see, when Jesus comes in, oh, that's where the change. You see, nobody, Jesus didn't say, Zacchaeus. Jesus didn't point a finger at him. He didn't thump on his chest, Zacchaeus. Don't you know what you've done? I know everything you've done, Zacchaeus. No, when Jesus walked in, amen, because Zacchaeus welcomed him in. Love walked in. Amen. God's love walked in. Jesus is love. When you open up your heart and you take a chance, when you open a heart and forget about others, when you open a heart, don't let the devil, oh, please, don't let the devil intimidate you. Don't let the devil, you know, put embarrassment over you. If anybody ought to be embarrassed, it ought to be me. Amen? You see, God's not given us a spirit of fear. He's not given us to be intimidated. He's given us love, power, sound mind. Boldness, grace, goodness, mercy, compassion. This is the one that you and I, we're not waiting till we get around the throne, my friends. As has been said tonight by Brother Blair, amen, we're already bowing down to our king. We're already confessing the name of Jesus. We're already praising that name. We're already worshiping that name because he's our Jesus. He's our love. He's the love of our soul. Don't let the devil rob you. I said, don't let the devil rob you. You don't have to do flip carts. You don't have to show anybody anything. All you have to do is show Jesus. You can come up here softly tonight. Nobody's going to make you do anything. Amen. But I'll tell you this. If you will take that occasion tonight and we sing the song again and you're gonna, again you're going to sing with all the anointing you've already had and you're going to sing it with a double anointing tonight. Amen. And I'm going to welcome each and every one of you. Don't look around. Don't worry about anybody else. What is it that's going on that you know you need deliverance? You don't have to shout that out to anybody. You don't have to tell anybody what's going on other than Jesus. Now, he already knows. Where are you hurting tonight? And how long have you been hurting? He knows. Amen. 
What else is it that you need of a loving God and Savior? Amen. He's here tonight. You need the Holy Ghost, the love of God. He's here tonight. You need peace of mind tonight. He's here tonight. Amen. You need hope for tomorrow. He'll give you that tonight. Amen. If you just begin to worship him. If you're just like Zacchaeus, Jesus walked into his house. And when Jesus walked into his house, Jesus walked into his heart. And Jesus declared him a son of Abraham. You see, Jesus declared him to be righteous. Jesus declared him, amen, of faith. Salvation had come to Zacchaeus. Salvation had come to Zacchaeus. You have may have been born again, and thank God you have, but you are still in need of salvation. You are still in need of being saved from depression. You are still in need of being saved from confusion. You are still in need of being saved from worrying and being fearful. You are still in need, hallelujah. And Jesus is here to fulfill every one of your needs. Would you sing that song? Let's worship God together. Jesus, you're here. No one like you, Lord. No one like you, Lord. Oh, remember, there's no one like him. There's no one like him. I promise you, there's no one like Jesus. Oh, no.
stop this. I don't want to stop anybody's liberty right now. Amen. You continue to worship the Lord. He's not finished. Amen. There's still a fellowship back in the fellowship hall there. Have fellowship one with another and let Jesus be in the midst of you as you're having that fellowship one with another. And remember, when you leave here tonight, Jesus doesn't stay here. Although his presence is always here, Jesus is wherever you are. And he has not stopped working on your behalf. Wherever you are, Jesus is there. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.